Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we rewatch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. I'm Helena. And I'm Ben. And for today's episode, we watched Underworld. So, Underworld. I mean, I watched it once when I was younger, and by that I mean I was being babysat by, I guess, cousins, I don't know, family's huge, and I vividly remember watching Bill Nye's head get sliced in half while eating strawberries with a, one of them like fondue fountain things, like the, the chocolate fountains. I never yeah. saw this as a child. I, I watched this film a lot as a child. I really liked this film as a child because I, I was a weird goth kid. <laughs> I think I watched it maybe once in a very broken manner on like ITV2 or something like that. So I don't really have many, many memories of it. But If people don't know what ITV is, um, I'm not sure. I think... <laughs> The ITV is like the bad BBC. Channel three. Um yeah. it's television. That's what it stands for. <laughs> yeah. It's it's no like way. No, I don't know what it stands for. Oh All right. <laughs> yeah. It's like the BBC got there first, then Channel Four got there first. Or is it like I it no, feels it's like... ITV was second and then it was channel four because it ITV feels... was channel three. It feels like ITV is just left over. I'm pretty sure what was second was BBC two. The second oh, yeah. BBC. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, ITV is just a bad TV channel full of bad, a lot of bad shows, and every now and then, a good one. Exactly. So the best way to watch a movie is on ITV2 with ad breaks, sometimes at parts where it just, like, you know, breaks apart a joke. Yeah, or action sequence. Best way to watch it's things. Regimented break every 15 minutes is the best way to watch Underworld. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's fucking long. <laughs> and uh, you'd probably forget what they were talking about by the time you get back from the adverts. Yeah, that was my main thing about rewatching this. Because I, when I say I loved this film as a kid, I mean, I watched this film a lot as a child. It's um, two hours long. I know. I do not remember it being two hours long. And I don't, I, as an adult, I struggled to get through it. Yeah. How it did I watch that as a child? It definitely feels two hours long. By the end, I'm just like, make a decision already. There's so much more talking than I remembered. Yeah, mm. for a film yeah. which is at its core about vampires having a war with werewolves. Fucking hell, you just don't shut up. <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad, but the acting when they're talking is just atrocious as well. The dialogue like, is, it... is not great. No, the, I, see, I think the acting is fine because they got a lot of... Again, it's one of those weird films where there's a lot of really fucking good actors in this film. Yeah, I was very yeah. surprised to see uh, Michael Sheen in it. I yeah. don't know why I didn't expect him. Because, it, yeah, it's Michael Sheen. Bill Nye? That was Bill Nye weird. Nye. <laughs> Written yeah. by Danny McBride, but not that one. Yeah, different Danny McBride. Not the comedian, a stunt coordinator. Kate Beckinsale, great actress. Uh, yeah, Michael Sheen. A lot of amazing actors. They just tried so hard to make the script sound good. It just wasn't. And it was just long. If you cut like half an hour to an hour off of it, it would have been better. You didn't need the middle bit. What would you cut though? Um, Any the of middle... it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no, actually thinking about it, that's a good point. There isn't much you can cut and it still makes sense. Yeah, exactly. They they have to explain a lot of the lore. Like it, yeah. I, I guess it's necessary, but I don't know. I suppose it, it does say a lot where the only thing I remember is Bill Nye's head being sliced in half. This film starts in quite a promising, action-packed way. Yeah, the sort of intro fight scene on all the trains and everything. It yeah. does have the, the, the same issue that we had with a previously discussed one, Wanted, where it's like, for a secret organisation, they make a lot of noise and trouble there's a lot of collateral damage yeah i mean underworld not to defend the film because i have i still like it but i have more <laughs> issues with it now than i do the job it is i think at one point that it does like heavily imply that they have cleanup crews whereas okay. in in wanted it was kind of just nothing came of it yeah how do you clean up a shootout on a train station, though? Uh, like money? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of hush money. Small soldiers, yeah. yeah, small soldiers style. They're ancient vampires. They have money. They have investments. They have cool clothes. They do have cool clothes. They have... It, the Underworld feels like the ultimate goth film. It has cool clothes if you're 14 and, you your know... favourite colour is black. Yes. Because <laughs> the, the costumes are in, 
insane. And a point on on the well, the lichens in this film that they're called looking good. That's physical. That's like they built actual werewolf suits. Oh, oh nice. cool. That makes sense. Actors to be in, which is why I think like that part of it holds up. Yeah, definitely. Because there's other werewolf films where it's it's pretty cringy. Yeah, I suppose maybe they they probably use CGI just to like in instead of going full CGI werewolves, it was just to go from person to just the transformation scene and maybe they had little like halfway points as well yeah so then they could just sort of phase them into each other and that's why it looks pretty good yeah what i remember about this film was a lot of the budget went on those suits because they made a lot of them yeah (laughs) 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 on those suits and bill nye probably yeah why i mean i just don't quite understand why he's in this film paid probably quite a lot yeah i mean he looked like he was having a great time to be honest (laughs) i mean he did bring some gravitas to the uh to the role it was probably someone it was probably either kate beckinsale or michael sheen who were like we can talk him into it it was what 2003 that this came out yeah so it was just before Shaun of the dead as well so it was kind of the Hmm. i guess the start of bill nye's like oh let's just do some weird shit what did he mm. even do before Let's this? Be I don't in, know. I'd say indie films, but no, otherwise quite a big film. Yeah. I mean, I, I mostly know him for Love Actually. <laughs> I was yeah. about to say, Love Actually came out the same year as Underworld. <laughs> oh, so Underworld is a Christmas movie. Uh, <laughs> yes. Always learn. Underworld is a Christmas movie. Yeah, pretty fun if you'd like, I guess, swapped the characters of each one. Oh, so no, same, in, yeah. same character, both films. Yeah. In this he's... one, he's a vampire that's lived for too long and in love actually he's a musician that's lived for too long and wants to make a christmas song i think i'd, I'd listen to victor's christmas album i would he his voice i'm so glad they got him to play that character because his voice is like an ancient vampire mm. his, his act was so good <laughs> almost too good though because it it shows up the flaws in the film and the other acting yeah yeah like the guy who played craven i didn't think was that great unfortunately no it was very stilted at times and there was i guess that they're trying to have that like the atmosphere that the vampires have is very tense and everyone and like proper yeah and she's like this black sheep of the vampire group Mm. but still it was it was just very stilted and awkward to listen to when they were discussing things yeah the dialogue was odd in bits but again some bits it was quite good and the action sequences were solid the action sequences are all really good that bit where she like you know doesn't use the elevator she just shoots the floor (laughs) yeah you shoot the floor i like her emergency elevator it's great (laughs) werewolves can't follow you down holes everyone knows that well the elevator would take too long and might have a werewolf in it yeah touching more on the werewolf side of it they're not like a silver bullet mm-hmm. always used to be bye bye werewolf in the same way that like a stake to the heart dusts a vampire as far as yeah. I was concerned. So it was very weird for them to be kind of, it was more like they had an allergy to silver and it made them burn up and then they pushed, they just kept on pushing these bullets out. I imagine I missed a lot of little weird little bits of dialogue that explained stuff because there was enough dialogue in this film. I think everything in it got explained because yeah. what, what oh, else okay. are they talking about? Yeah. <laughs> for two, two and a half <laughs> for two hours. hours. What, else can they, what else can the dialogue be about? So I assumed it was just like the the silver bullets they've either like built up an immunity to which is why they have to use silver is it silver nitrate that like liquid silver gun bullets that they use yeah yeah and that's why he got so ill and then they yeah. retaliate with liquid sunlight yeah with a uv bullet which is such a good concept so is it just shooting them with a light bulb then pretty much no i think it's like yeah it's just a wait how do those bullets work um ma- magic science uv is more of a like it's like a gas in the bulb that burns and slowly diminishes over time so maybe it's when they fire it it just kind of ignites it in the bullet and then i i, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I mean if anything could have been cut it sounds like these bullet things could have been cut because there's nothing about it in the plot summary that I can see and I yeah. don't remember the explanations it, it probably was because they had vampires being killed with bullets and they realized that that can't in their own lore these vampires are kind of bullet immune yeah they yeah. probably wanted like you know some cool action scenes but to focus on it being more modern and have it to be more like gunfight based when it's vampires yeah. and werewolves you'd expect a few more like physical brawls yeah like a shootout's kind of pointless when it comes to vampires and werewolves because yeah. they can just stand there and ignore it i can't remember is there any point where a, a werewolf that has fully transformed into a werewolf is just holding a gun 
because I hope so. No, no. I think they avoid that. Yeah, once yeah. they get werewolfy, I think they they mostly go for like chomping. Yeah, hand to hand. Yeah. So yeah, normally in this podcast we explain the story, but there is so much of it that we just can't. So I've forgotten most of it. Well, isn't it basically like a Romeo and Juliet storyline? Um, yeah. yeah the they try to. She is fighting the werewolves, and um, because she's what stumbled across them, uh, yeah. and that's her job. Her job is to kill werewolves sort of indiscriminately and she notices they're following a human and she wants to know why and it turns out then this human has been bitten by a werewolf but not transformed yet and has also been bitten by he has the genetic strain i don't even know what you'd call it like i guess his dna or genetics allow him to become a vampire werewolf hybrid yeah now i remember so the law of how vampire because again they explain how the law of vampires and werewolves happened because it's two and a half hours of dialogue of course <laughs> they explain how that happens and the legend is there was one person that created three people one of them was a werewolf one of them was a human and one of them was a vampire and that human character that's in the this film the special guy he is a direct descendant of that original human. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, which makes him a direct descendant of the creator. So he has the genetic possibility of being able to be the first hybrid. That's and I think it. That, that's why they're after him. There's also and a then... bit of like sci-fi magic because aren't, isn't, aren't like vampirism and werewolves, aren't they all passed on by a virus? Isn't that right? I don't think they are in this. I think it's a... That might be the plot of one of the other Underworld films. Oh, yeah. There are, like, five, I think. They are not good. If you didn't like this one, do not watch the other ones. I feel like I would remember what happened a little bit more clearly if there had been some variation in the colour palette. Oh, yeah, no, this film is very blue. Yes. Almost (laughs) exclusively shades of blue. It's the colour scheme of the Evanescence album that I had as a teenage girl. <laughs> this, I'm honestly shocked there isn't Evanescence in this film somewhere. How sure are you there isn't? I'm pretty... I don't remember any. <laughs> I'm just... Wait, there's David Bowie in it. Yeah, I can see that. That's because he's a vampire. Oh, okay. Close. <laughs> the Amy Lee does feature in oh, it. Yeah, of course, oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The song Now I Know. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, it's a, a, a song with Ren Holder, who worked with Nine Inch Nails, and Amy Lee did a song together. So, yeah, she was... The, oh, she yeah, she, they did two songs, actually. Uh, that makes sense. Like, you, you, I don't think you can have a film this goth and not have Evanescence in it somewhere. Not a film that's trying to be this popular and goth at the same time. Like, yeah. this film wants you to like it. It wants to be cool and edgy. It does have, as it, with all of its cool and edginess, it does have some really interesting concepts that are lost in the two and a half hours. I don't think I've, we've mentioned it yet, but this film is <laughs> two and a half hours long. It is, is it? I thought it was two. I thought it was 100 and... Apparently, the running time's 121 minutes. Hey, we, we watch a longer version. Did, did, you watch, watch... did you watch a longer version? Is there an <laughs> extended cut? There is an extended cut. That's the one I watched. Extended cut. <laughs> that was like two hours and twenty-five minutes or something. Yeah, it was a long slog. There are really interesting. I really like the ancient vampires. They have a system of who is in control, and when two are asleep, one is awake. And I'm shocked that system has never gone wrong before this film happens because that is a bad system. So. If these vampires are immortal, why do they do that then? Because Bill Nye's character says he they do it to leapfrog through time. Yeah. If you were immortal and you'd already lived for like a thousand years, would you want to be conscious? You've got to keep it fresh. Have yeah. to nap every so often and come back in a different style of the world, I guess. Do you think he was yeah. like up and about in the 80s? <laughs> Isn't it well, like a hundred years that they say? I think yeah. so. Damn, that's a hell of a jump then. So he wasn't in the 80s, it was the other So he'd come back and it'd just be guns everywhere. And he woke up too soon as well. I think that was another part of the plot, was like he wasn't supposed to have been woken up yet, but Kate Beckinsale was like, nah, mate, get the fuck up. Yeah. (laughs) He adjusted really quick. Oh, no, he didn't, because he still had a sword. Mm. Yep. (laughs) He refused to have guns. And that's what became his downfall in the end, when uh, Kate Beckinsale (laughs) jumped over the top of him. And it did that cool thing, which is like in that movie, I went to say Titanic, but not Titanic, Ghost Ship, where the... uh, No, Titanic. It's in the Titanic, yeah, the bit where the, like, wire goes across them, and they're all standing perfectly fine, and then you see them start to bleed and fall in half. Yeah, that famous scene in Titanic. Exactly, it was a very sharp iceberg. (laughs) 
Yes. Yeah, so Celine wakes up Victor because she doesn't trust Craven anymore, but yeah. she thinks that he's working with the Lycans. Yeah, which he is. As a, I never really thought about that. Yeah, I'm why sure, again, is he I'm sure working with them? <laughs> oh, definitely. There's so much of this film, and I think by the end of it, I'd already forgotten what had happened at the yeah. start. So it was difficult to follow by the the monotony and the the just yeah, yeah how how slow it was. It's but there was still so much happening. Because by the end of it, the werewolves weren't the bad guys anymore. Yeah, it had that. You're right, actually, Ben. It does have that Romeo and Juliet kind of feel to it by the time. Because yeah. even though she's a vampire and he's a descendant of a human, there's these two warring factions, but neither are necessarily good or bad. But they're no use or they're very unhelpful to... If these two people want to be together, they have to defy both races. Yeah. But the main werewolf, is it Michael Sheen was the main lycan? He was, yeah. No, I thought like he the was the original. I thought he was the main vampire. Nope. <laughs> I'm remembering it very wrong. I... Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Bill no. Nye was the main vampire, Victor. Yeah. Then which one was Craven? Was that not Michael Sheen? No, no, no. that's Shane Broly. Oh, okay, cool, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, this is a podcast where we get confused about the film Underworld. <laughs> I'm starting yeah. to realise why what happened happened when we watched this at three in the morning that one time. Yeah, yeah, that was a... I think we spent most of the time just changing Kate Beckinsale's name because it started as Cake Baking Sale. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember. It, it probably ended up something ridiculous like Kit Kat or something. I don't know. It was it was three in the morning and it was an incredibly long movie. I think we just yeah. went off. We like, started <laughs> watching it at like midnight <laughs> and we forgot how long it was. But this, yeah, I'm still trying to just remember the story. I think Michael Sheen's character, Lucian, was trying to make the hybrid for some reason. I think it was for revenge. I think it was to stop the war. Yeah, but I can only think of one way to stop that war and would be to one side to beat the other permanently. Well, That's the impression I mean, got. If they did have a werewolf vampire hybrid, then maybe it'd be like, cool, there can be peace between us. Now we can focus on the real villains, which is <laughs> humans. humans. <laughs> <laughs> which would have been a, again, we're getting into this in this show. There is a much better sequel than what actually happened in the sequels. Actually, no, I think that did happen in the later sequels as they started fighting the humans. Yeah, in Underworld 78, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so Michael Sheen's character was the good guy because he wanted to make the hybrid. Because he bit the, the werewolf guy. Yeah. The mm-hmm. human guy. Uh, and then he got shot and he was like, bite him. <laughs> Vividly remember that. <laughs> oh, that was with the liquid uh, silver pouring out of him. Yeah. <laughs> bite him. And then, yeah, he turned into a hybrid and nearly got killed by Bill Nye until he got his head cut in half. There's some of the methods that the vampires use... And I like I just remember no, no. some of the vampire the methods that the vampires use to fight the werewolves are kind of stupid. Yeah, because there's like they have silver guns, silver liquid silver bullets, mm-hmm. which fair enough. Uh, although a lot of the werewolves get shot a lot and don't go down with the liquid bullets. There's only a few liquid silver bullets as well. They don't all have that. Exactly. Otherwise, I uh, actually know they did, but then Kate Beckinsale wasted a lot of them when she shot through the floor. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> she she must use up most of their ammo. Cause... She did seem like the most competent fighter out of all of them. Well, she's yeah. the only one who's an official death dealer. Yeah, I think so. So I guess it is literally her job. Do you guys remember the bit when it turns out that Sonia, the vampire, is pregnant with Lucian the Lycan's baby? Yeah. Yeah, that was in the flashback, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, because they actually made a film about that bit. Oh, do they? Yeah, that's like Underworld 3. So I think that was the start of the war. Oh, that was oh, it. Oh, okay. Because yeah. Bill Nye burned his daughter alive because he had a child with she had a child with a werewolf. And he was like, fuck you, and then ran away. Um, going back to the inconsistencies with underworld law versus general supernatural myth mythology, mm-hmm. there's an awful lot of like vampires it looking at themselves in mirrors, which is just like, oh, okay. Yeah, they never talk about that. No, it's never addressed. It's just there's a lot of scenes where there is long shots of them looking in mirrors and like getting ready. So it's almost like they want you to notice, but then they just never bring up and it's never like a question about their souls. And I don't know if this film's clever enough because it turns it doesn't it turn out that it's all just a virus. Yeah, I think yeah. I yeah. think if I remember rightly, some of the ramblings of I think Michael Sheen, he goes on about how that original dude was the only survivor in a village 
from some sort of virus and then the virus mutated his genome so he had his offspring became vampires werewolves and then humans somehow and that's how it all began so there's none of that like they're reborn and don't have souls no i think that they are living breathing creatures i think they're just some can go in the light and some can't some turn into big werewolves and others just plod around as normal humans i don't know they drink blood like the vampires seem to be blood dependent oh that's true but yeah they other than that like it, their underworld is very choosy about what bits of mythology it takes on which is okay mm. i mean it is all you know not to shun the believers out there but it is all made up anyway what? um me is so disappointed in myself right now for not believing but yeah they definitely are super picky what bit it's just yeah plot based what what is convenient and and what isn't exactly yeah. and it's you know it's convenient for them to have lots of scenes where they're dark and brooding and looking into mirrors hmm. <laughs> how I mean, else would they dress fair. in all black if they couldn't yeah. see what exactly. they were getting I mean... into <laughs> They, they had a really good movie. dress sense, to be fair. So, like, Craig, can't Craig do that without mirrors. Party shirt was one of my favorite parts of the film. It's the only part oh, that nice. I really remember. Celine's full latex rubber outfit doesn't seem the most practical thing in the world. Yeah, she probably squeaks quite a bit as she walks. Yeah, I remember see, when I was really into this film, Kate Beckinsale had to be sewn into that every day and then, like, wow. cut out of it. And I can't imagine how uncomfortable that thing was. Even for Selene as a character, yeah, she's a vampire, but she's still going to get like rashes and cut. She's going to yeah, be going to sweat. Like yeah. she's doing a lot of stunts. And like just to break the fourth wall of it being a movie, just imagine being on set with all the like hot lights and everything, and just the big leather coat. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's everyone is wearing a big leather coat at all time. <laughs> just. <laughs> Just, just baby powder by the truckload. <laughs> so much baby powder. Yeah, that's where the other half of the budget went on. It was werewolf <laughs> costumes and baby powder. <laughs> oh, imagine being inside the werewolf costumes. Those little weird latex rubber full body suit that you can't get out of in a rush. Do you so... think the set smelled of wet dog? <laughs> I can't. I don't even want to think about what, what the underworld set smelled like. Mm, it would not have smelled good. <laughs> do you think it holds up, Mikey? Uh, bits of it. I think bits of it do. I think the wells hold up really well. The lichens, sorry, <laughs> hold up really well. I think some of the story does. Bits of it is stupid. I don't fully understand the scene where the man fights a werewolf with whips at all because it's not needed. Is that Craven's death? Is that when Craven dies? No, that was just some like unnamed henchman. Yeah, he decides to fight a werewolf with whips, which doesn't go well, obviously. Are, uh, they, are they silver whips? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're like his bullet belts, whatever those things are called. I think he fights with them, so yeah? The magazine, like empty magazines. No, like Mandalay. Uh, Mandalay, yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's them that he fights with, I think. <laughs> but it just doesn't seem like a good idea, because at no point does the werewolf care that this guy has two whips. Also, fighting with two whips is a very bad idea, because you have no control. <laughs> if you lose control of one of them, it's... It's hitting you. You can't stop that. Yeah, a sword definitely feels more efficient. For a gun. They have guns. They ha they very cl they make a very big statement that this film they have guns that can kill werewolves and this guy's you know what no yeah it's it's one of those films where they reveal like you know these key weapons but they just don't use them. Well, they use, like, whatever would look cool in a fight scene. Yeah, because I think in one scene, a werewolf tries to charge a line of vampires with guns and he just gets mowed down. You're like, okay, so that works. If enough of them shoot a werewolf. Werewolves, these lichens, I'm going to keep correcting myself, are these lichens, like, infinitely stronger than the vampires? Because the vampires seem way scareder of the lichens than the other way around. They're probably very physically strong, I imagine. Like, as compared to the, like, the vampires seem agile and, yeah, able to get out of situations and stuff. They, they don't seem as physically strong as they, they're sometimes depicted. So I imagine that, yeah, the, the lichens probably are a lot stronger. So the lichens are better. Yeah. So then they can also, they... they can handle being absolutely riddled with bullets. Yeah. That's true. So if the lichens are just organised and unionised, they could <laughs> fight the vampires. But yeah, I think on the whole, most of the film holds up. I don't think a lot of it does. I think the action sequences hold up, I think the lichens hold up, and I think some of the story concepts do. A lot of it, <laughs> I didn't remember as a child. And upon rewatching, really d not good. A film doesn't need that much dialogue. An action film shouldn't have that much dialogue. So one thing that I thought about this film was like, it's like they made Twilight, but aimed at 
boys instead of the way that Twilight is aimed so solidly at young girls. Whereas Twilight was like a a romance film with bits of violence. This is just a vi- like a violent action film with hints of romance. Hints of romance, that's true. But uh, well, then you have the ultimate question: is who would win in a fight, Edward Cullen <laughs> or Celine? <laughs> My bet's on Celine. Oh, for sure. Oh, she just shoot. <laughs> <laughs> she would just shoot him. Although the yeah, I mean the werewolves from Underworld would also defeat. Is it Jacob? Sure. Yeah, Which one? Okay. Just a big wolf, isn't he? Yeah. Because the lichens, they're like proper werewolves. So. Yeah. But. The ultimate question is which of them can easily defeat the uh, horrific baby. Oh, oh, yeah. The nightmare baby. Yeah. Which? Well, surely the hybrid. Yeah, the hybrid that... will be able to. I think most of them can probably kill the nightmare baby. Most of them would want to as well. <laughs> yeah, Especially yeah. if they saw the thing. Like, yeah. fucking hell. <laughs> now that doesn't get deserved to live. Even, even as a prop, it's terrifying. <laughs> I'm just looking at the well, the wolves in Twilight because I thought that might be a good comparison mm. they do not hold up like they they're animated like, these yeah they're like full CG and it's not aged well they're super fluffy and pasted onto the scene like you just can't yeah you can't have CG that ages well yeah, yeah unless like, you lean into it the fact that it doesn't age well I think it's because like hair it's only really recently it's been easy, easier to animate I think back then it was much harder to do yeah uh, that is a, a very good point actually yeah like that that amount of particles to try and get it to look right and realistic is pretty yeah. difficult. Whereas sticking pubes on a rubber mould. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is a horrific way to describe it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a werewolf costume. Something popped into my mind, like the with like inconsistencies in the movie and like things that just not not making sense. So you know like the main vault where all the head vampires are like resting. Mm-hmm. You know there's like the big vault door which like you have to open by getting a security guard to press a button. There are two side doors you can just walk in and out of. <laughs> like, I think once Celine uses it to get in and out, and then I think Craven uses it to like escape from Victor. So I was watching that last night. I was like, hang on a minute. That's not a very good vault. <laughs> and I think that kind of sums up this movie. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it is thought through, but there are some very glaring problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Helena and Ben, did you think it held up? Watching this for the first time as an adult, I understand fully why I missed it when it was first brought out. It wasn't massively popular. I think I think it's one of those movies you could put on and just like turn your brain off and just like enjoy the mindless violence. But plot is a bit confusing, so that's fair. yeah, that's a fair point. I I kind of agree. Like in in the moment, I really enjoyed I enjoyed rewatching it. But yeah, it probably says a lot that looking back at it just a couple of weeks later, and I'm like. I don't have a fucking clue what happened in half of the movie. <laughs> the bits I remember are, yeah, like the action set pieces and, and things like that, which, like I say, they, they held up pretty well. I did quite enjoy those. So how many weird UV bullets out of 10 would you give it? Like a five. Like it's watchable and enjoyable. Just don't expect it to do anything. There's a lot of, yeah, there's so much happens for them to be at, basically the same point minus a few vampires and werewolves at the end it's a really good way of looking at it actually yeah i'd give it two two magic bullets out of out of ten i i don't want to watch this film again i don't want to you know when we're on the uh 200th episode and we're (laughs) re-watching films we watched at the start i don't want to do this one (laughs) i'll um i'll give it a 5.5 only because i really really liked the werewolf transformation scenes they're actually very good it does make me want to listen to evanescence though oh yeah yeah this has strong early 2000s vibes yeah just the the early 2000s new metal and emo music and just break out the arm warmers i'd probably give it like a like like yeah like a five or six like yeah magic uv bullets I, I say I, I enjoyed it in the moment, but yeah, now now I'm just like, eh. I, like I, I might watch it again at some point, but it's it's not going to be one that I kind of jump to rewatch. If, if it... it was on on the TV, I would change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be on ITV and God, if it's two hours without adverts, what's it like with? Three. It's gonna be over three hours, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, and with that, I've been Dan. I've been Michael. I've been Helena. And I've been Ben. And you can find us on Twitter at Hilton Pod, that is at H I L T M Pod. And we're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google Podcasts. If you could leave us a review, that would be um be great. great.
Wake me up inside. Wake me up inside. Save me from this really long film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.